Hello everyone and welcome to my channel for a new makeover video. In today's video, we are going to be doing a complete DIY flooring renovation. We've got some demo, we've got the install, we've got it all for you in today's video and I cannot wait to share it with you. We are also going to be going through our whole complete downstairs makeover as well, going from what we had before to what we have now and i'm going to be sharing all of that with you i've got some budget friendly decor updates to share with you new finishes new furniture and i cannot wait to share all of the before and after shots with you come along on this journey with me as we completely change the downstairs space of our home we are going to be doing a lot of demo in today's video it was a family affair so i cannot wait to bring you guys along with all of us as we get this done when we moved into the house, we knew that we wanted to change everything up. We did not buy the house for its finishes, its flooring or any of that stuff. So we finally got to the point where we were able to do all of the flooring, redo all the baseboards and redo it into something that we liked. So we're going to be ripping up all the different floorings. As you can see, we have multiple. There's a different floor in the laundry room, then there is in the living room, then there is in the kitchen. There were three different kinds of flooring downstairs and we are going to replace all of that today. But before we get to replacing the floors, we gotta rip the floors up. And before we rip the floors up, we gotta get all this junk up that was underneath the couch. So we're gonna clean up this space so that we can tear everything up. Demo is one of my favorite parts of a makeover project and i am so excited to be sharing this with you we had our kids helping us we do have two little ones that you will see throughout this video so it did make getting this done in a timely manner a little bit harder but we were able to get it done so i just wanted to let you guys know that if you have the will to do it there is a way you can do anything that you put your mind to beyond gravel beyond I feel like I need to put a little disclaimer out there that we are not professionals. We're just a couple of homeowners that love doing DIY projects. I absolutely love a good home makeover, a huge DIY project, even though it's a huge undertaking, always. It's always so worth it in the end and the pride and joy we get out of knowing that we put this work in ourselves is incredible. Um, if you've been around, subscribe to my channel for a while, then you've probably seen some of my other makeover videos, go big or go home. So we are going to be ripping off the quarter round and the baseboards. I had to cut the caulking on the quarter round to be able to pry it off so that I could get to the baseboards and pry those off too. We kind of bounced around the living room area with getting all this stuff up. I had my husband cleaning up while I was ripping stuff up and then we kind of switched back and forth from doing all of that. As you can see, we are also ripping up the red underlayment. We considered reusing it, but since the house was built in 2008, 2009, we wanted to have something fresh and new. It was in really good condition, but you know, we would just want everything to be ours. <laughs> we wanted it to be our house, our underlayment, all that good stuff. Did it make a difference? I don't really know. But we are going to get all of the living room stuff taken up before we move on to doing the kitchen area, which is more of a linoleum flooring, which was such a pain to get up. My goodness, it was horrendous. It took so long, literally blood, sweat, and tears to get it all up. I'm working on scraping up any glue that is left around in the living room right now so that when we are ready to lay the flooring, everything is all ready to go. So on to removing the kitchen and dining area flooring. It is like a linoleum kind of thing, vinyl. I'm gonna call it linoleum. If that's not what it is, don't quote me on it, but it looks like linoleum. I mean, it looks like fake rocks in here. So we found that cutting it into strips Pulling it and rolling it was the easiest way for us to get this out. Our house was built in, I wanna say 2008 or 2009. So that 
This flooring has been in here for quite some time now. Wow, I can't even believe that it's 2023. Holy moly. So this flooring has been in our house for a long time. This was original flooring for the kitchen and it took some time for us to pull it up. The glue, we could not get it off of the floors. We tried. So we decided that we were just going to do our own underlayment even though the flooring that we are using has an underlayment attached to it. I will have everything linked down below for you guys so it is easy for you to find. But we lived in a construction zone for quite some time. We had some sticky floors in the kitchen which was a pain in the butt to walk around on everybody had to wear shoes until all the flooring was done but we chose to go with the pergo outlast in vienna oak it is a premium laminate flooring and it also has an underlayment attached i kind of just mentioned that a little bit ago as a pre-attached underlayment it is a 10 millimeter thick premium core it comes with a lifetime residential warranty it is scuff and dent resistant and we've had no issues with that at all we have two dogs we have two kids we have loved this flooring so back to installing it and i'm not rambling on we organized each piece of the laminate flooring into piles because since it isn't actual wood you get a lot of the same looking pieces so we organized that so that we weren't laying the exact same pieces next to each other and had variation. This is the flooring. As you can see, the white is the pre-attached underlayment. As I mentioned, it's a 10 millimeter thick core. It is a click lock installation, which is pretty easy to install. So if you are a beginner wanting to do this, it is not necessarily hard. It just takes a little bit of getting used to and working the pieces in the right way. I would recommend reading some blogs, watching a bunch of YouTube videos, including this one, on how to get the perfect installation. But organizing your wood pieces or your flooring pieces is always a good idea so that you have the variation throughout your downstairs. This is the underlayment that we chose to use. As I mentioned, the flooring does have one attached I'm not sure if you need to use both, but we use both to use as a moisture barrier. And also in the kitchen area, as I mentioned before, was very sticky. So we got this underlayment from Home Depot and I wanna say it was $15 a roll. We tried to do this whole project as budget friendly as possible. That is why we are doing the installation ourselves. We saved ourselves probably at least $1,000 by doing the flooring install all on our own. Like I said, it took a long time, but it was well worth the time and effort in the end. So here's the underlayment. We are going to start laying the flooring. I'm going to show you the products that we are using throughout the video as we are using them, but everything will be linked down below for you to find really easily as well. My husband being the smart cookie that he is, which this is something that I wouldn't even have thought to do. That's why I'm saying this. He measured the length of the wall so that we knew how many panels that we were going to be needing and where we were going to be needing to make cuts along the way so that we could maximize our flooring that we bought without scrapping a ton of it. But we are also using these spacers to put along the border and the border of the rooms so that there is a little bit of a gap that you need for floating flooring. So this is floating flooring. I sh probably should have mentioned that before mentioning the spacers, but I will show you guys the spacers that we are using in just a sec here. And I will also have those linked down below for you. So we bordered the entire room, every single space that we did with these spacers while we were laying in the outer edges of the flooring and the outer pieces that were closest to the walls. So my husband is really, really handy and he's really good at so many things. So he's the one who's gonna take care of most of the flooring install, but these are the flooring expansion spacers that we use. And it says here on the side, you can use a quarter inch for vinyl, half an inch for laminate and one inch for hardwood. And it, these spacers themselves can be used in different ways to get that space that you need for your floating flooring. So here is our first row of flooring. I was so excited to be doing this. I actually had a sample of this flooring sitting in our junk drawer for probably two years before we were able to pull the trigger and actually spend the money to do the flooring installs. Your love. Give me love. 
So this is the flooring. And it's a beautiful blonde color. It's similar to a blonde oak. Obviously, it is not oak because it is lamin laminate. But it was a pretty easy install. The only thing that took a really long time was cutting it and placing it in the right spots. But as you can see, you click it into place and then you just kind of tap it so that it is secured into place and kind of get like that, that snap. You don't want an actual snap though because you don't want to snap your pieces and waste your wood, but you want it to click lock into place and have a seamless finish. Up a couple different to start laying out the plank. Think of the one that you want right there. I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna cut this one so that it starts like right here in between. And then the next one will be this one, and then we'll start stacking. Okay, so you're gonna lot. cut it so it's gonna be like right here, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the next one will do this, and then we'll take that one over there. So, like Okay, so what my husband was getting at was that he was going to cut the planks down so that we could have more of a staggered look so it wasn't the same sized plank right next to each other every single time. So he went and he cut the plank down so that we could do smaller pieces on the ends and then have more of a staggered look and variation through the flooring planks. Just like how we made it a point to organize the flooring planks by the designs that are on them. So not everything is matchy matchy and completely uniform and next to each other. We wanted it to look more of like a natural wood flooring install versus something that doesn't look natural. So we are going to stagger the pieces. We made sure to organize the pieces and not have the same designs right next to each other. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a click lock system. It did take a little bit of wiggling in some areas, but I will get a shot for you guys and show you guys what I mean by like a seamless finish when I say that. There's no gaps in between the planks. You can tell that they are separate pieces, but it's not like a black gap where you can see the underlayment. I do worry over every situation The feel of desperation All that matters now is that I really So as mentioned, it was a slow process from start to finish. We lived with parts of flooring, half done flooring, half done kitchens for quite some time. But we are going to work on the downstairs half bathroom now. We are going to be removing the toilet, the cord around, the baseboards, the flooring, all of that stuff in here. We are going to put the toilet back and everything, obviously, but we are gonna remove everything so that we can really get the flooring in there and get it in there well, do it properly. Um, I got asked a ton how we did the flooring around our toilet in our bathroom makeover video. So I'm gonna show you the way that we did it in this video. It is different than what we did in the bathroom video, but that is one of my most asked questions. So I figured that I would show you guys. My husband ripped up everything in here, and when we put the toilet back, we just cut the flooring into basically almost like a square to go around the um, 
I don't know what the proper term is for it, the toilet hole <laughs> where the sewage goes. And we also replaced the gasket and stuff for the toilet to give everything something new and nice and fresh. So we are going to remove everything before installing. I wasn't able to get good videos of the install for the bathroom, but it's basically just the same steps that we took in the living room it is such a tight space it was super hard to get in there with the camera and my husband we use the same eight underlayment we use the same flooring and as you can see this is the little square i guess almost square almost rectangle that we did to cut the flooring and my husband used some sort of epoxy to seal off that area so that it wouldn't ruin the flooring if we had a toilet leak so we got the bathroom done we got the living room done and we are going to move on to the kitchen now we laid a strip of flooring so that we would have something to walk on instead of sticky floors before getting to the kitchen area but basically we just did the same install in the kitchen that we did in the living room we worked in sections in the kitchen mostly because it was really hard with all of the appliances the kids the dogs all that stuff so we laid as much of the flooring or i should say my husband laid as much of the flooring as possible in the kitchen before we pulled out the appliances and did the demo behind and underneath the appliances my job for most of the floor laying was just to organize the planks so that they were having some sort of variation between them and just picking out where they went. My husband did the install. He's a real MVP for pretty much this whole flooring renovation because I have no clue what I'm doing. He's one of those super handy people who can do anything and I am so lucky to have him and have him be so knowledgeable with pretty much everything. Goes Alrighty then, let's finish up the demo in the kitchen. We'll come down, what goes on? We'll come down, yes, what goes on? Finally we'll come down. to the good days here's to the sorrows if this is a mistake i know about tomorrow i don't want to fight no more so we're going to rip up the rest of this linoleum rock stuff and be done with it maybe it's something in the water or maybe we just hit the end of the road right now it doesn't even matter <laughs> So before we move on to installing flooring and other spaces and the baseboards and all of the good stuff, getting a new couch, new fan, all that stuff and some decor, we are going to install in the pantry area and also in the laundry room area. This is the same situation as the bathroom. Um, we could not get the camera in there while the flooring was being installed, but it was installed in the same method that was used in the living room and the kitchen area too. Um, when we did this pantry, and by we, I mean my husband and my father-in-law, when they did the pantry and put these shelves in because it was the under stairs closet first, the dark wood flooring was still in here. So we had to use the flooring pieces and the underlayment to stabilize it but the flooring install was the same 
as it was throughout the living room and the kitchen. So we are going to move on to doing the what is this called? The laundry room. Good Lord. Where is my brain at? We are going to move on to doing the laundry room now and demoing that. We're going to have to remove the washing machine as well as the dryer to get in there and properly remove quarter round baseboards and the flooring itself. These were vinyl plank tiles. I guess you could say they look like tile, but they were not tile. It was vinyl. And we had the same kind of flooring up in our upstairs bathroom that I just covered when I did the bathroom makeover. So this is the exact same flooring that was in my bathroom as well as my kid's bathroom. So we are going to, my husband is going to rip up the cord around, rip up the baseboards and rip up the flooring. He was in charge of doing the laundry room because I had to take my kids and get them out of the house. They had been cooped up for so long. So he was in charge of filming and doing all of this. So give him a little pat on the back, give him a round of applause because this is not his channel. This is my channel. And he's usually not the one in charge of all of that stuff. However, the camera did die and he did not notice it and he did not get the flooring install on video for the laundry room. Same process as the living room though, but honestly, the demo, watching the demo is one of my favorite parts. So here you go. You get a little look at the demo of the laundry room, which was so satisfying because I really, really hated these vinyl tiles. They were really hard to clean. The different colors and different textures on them drove me nuts. So seeing the last of it gone is so, so nice. Bye. I swear you've seen us move furniture around so much, but I cannot stress to you enough that this project of doing the flooring literally took us months. So this was months worth of filming and footage and getting everything done. So you're probably going to see us move some furniture some mo, and also cleaning up the floor because life with kids, what the heck is going on underneath the couch at all times? My goodness, how disgusting. Just living off the edge Only good times ahead We are prepping this space so that we can install our baseboards. I don't know if you call them baseboards where you live. Maybe you call it crown molding. I believe crown molding is up on the ceiling though. But this is what we use. 17 millimeter by five and a half inch by eight foot prime MBF boards for our baseboards. Then they were cut down to size and cut at a 45 degree angle to butt up to each other so that they are nice and flush. So as mentioned, they were cut to size, measured, cut, and cut at the 45 degree angle to make sure that they were flush. We were getting the exact length that we needed for this space. And my husband is super, super handy. So he was able to get this done and make them look as nice as possible. I am somebody who is really particular about stuff. So he used tight bond wood glue on those 45 degree angle edges just so that they were nice and adhered together before he used the brad nailer to nail them together, nail them into the wall. He also located the studs so that they were going to be nailed not only into the drywall, but into something more secure like the studs. I pull into your driveway the areas that gave us the most difficulty, or I should say the areas that gave my husband the most difficulty were the corners of our rooms because we have those bull nose edges so they are a rounded edge rather than something that's more sharp where you can butt your pieces of wood up to and it will look really nice. But he was able to configure them in a way that still made them look really, really good. Um, the people who lived here before us had these rounded end caps on their baseboards and they looked terrible because they were 
thicker than the actual baseboards. They were taller than the actual baseboards. It just didn't look good. So he butted these up to each other and then you see where those gaps are. We went back in with spackle and then caulking and filled in those spaces as best as we could so that they were seamless, they were flush, and there weren't any big huge gaps. So we're just using some all-purpose caulk. We're using spackling paste. We, the caulk that we're using is paintable because we are going to paint these baseboards as well. So we are going to spackle any of the little nail holes. We are gonna use caulking along the top edges but not the bottom ed edges because it is a floating flooring. And then we are going to let this all dry sand it down a little bit in any area that may need to be sanded on that spackling paste and we are going to paint. We are also going to be replacing the ceiling fan in the living room today. It's the Home Decorators Collection Mary. I'm not saying that right. It's a 52 inch LED indoor ceiling fan. It is used for larger rooms, but you could probably put it in any size room you want. You might just blow away like you're in a tornado, but we replaced the ceiling fan downstairs from a boob light fan to this nice upgraded, more contemporary looking fan. I figured it could be modern. It could be contemporary. It could also be traditional. It's just a sleek, nice black fan that's not too much of an eyesore like the other fan was. We are going to move on to painting these baseboards. They've been caulked, they've been filled, they are good to go. And we are going to tape everything off. I'm using blue painter's tape on the ground and then I'm going to be using some green rough surface painter's tape because we have these really textured walls here that drive me absolutely insane because they are such a pain in the butt to paint around but we are going to tape everything off we are going to get these baseboards nice and painted and i'm using polar bear white paint by bear it's a variation of a white i used it on my cabinets actually the white color that is on my kitchen cabinets i'm just using leftover paint because why not save some money cut some costs by doing that and i'm using this credit card trick to put the painter's tape in this little gap underneath our baseboard so I don't get paint on the floor, we are not doing quarter round on our baseboards. I do not like the look of quarter round. It drives me insane. It's just one more thing to clean up. I know some people love it. It's just not for me. It's not my taste. So we did not do it. So it leaves us with this little bit of gap underneath the baseboards that we cannot caulk because it is a floating floor. You don't want to caulk it. So we are just going to work around it. I'm going to stick the tape underneath the baseboard ever so slightly using the credit card just so I'm not getting paint on the floor. And we're gonna get to painting. Corey is gonna help me paint. We are going to use an angled brush and a roller. I am trying out a flocked mini foam roller. I don't know if I would recommend it. So do as I say and don't do it. <laughs> don't do as I do. It kind of left um, roller marks, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer the little foam rollers that I had used in my kitchen, the one that Corey's actually using. I used the different one, that gray one right there. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it left roller marks. I'm not a fan of roller marks. I hate them. That's why I bought a full blown paint sprayer to paint my cabinet doors. I know some people don't care. I'm particular. It may be annoying to some people, but that's fine. It's fine because I'm the one painting. So we're going to paint these, get these taken care of. And my favorite part of painting is when you get to pull up the tape. It is so satisfying. But here's a little trick. If you cannot finish up your painting, wrap your paintbrush and your roller in saran wrap to save it for later. Now that the painting of the baseboards has been done, we are getting close to being finished with the complete makeover. We are going to add one huge detail to it and I'm so excited to share it with you guys because it's something that we've been wanting for a really, really long time. 
we got a new couch we were able to update our couch get something bigger that is super super comfy and perfect for the family movie nights which we love having we have never had a brand new couch this is our very first brand new couch and i thought it was such a fitting time to go with our brand new flooring and the way that everything looks is just like my dream i love all the neutral tones i love all of the lighter tones it really brightens up the space I also got this planter from Hobby Lobby because you guys know I love my black and gold and I got this snake plant to put in the corner to add a little pop of greenery and a little pop of color to the room. If you say that you don't want to get close to me, close to what we used to be, but I just feel like dancing, are you feeling it too? Oh baby. Another thing that we did to change up the space and give it a little more optimal use is get a new rug. This rug you'll remember is from my room. It is a wool rug, which is just really not great to have with kids and dogs. It's a little bit harder to clean up. So we replaced it with a washable rug. It's from Rugs USA. It is not a ruggable. It is so much more affordable. It doesn't have the pad that the ruggable has, so that's probably why it's cheaper, but I love this rug. I'm obsessed with it. It fits in my washing machine, which isn't even one, a huge drum washing machine, so that's saying something. I love the rug. It was under $200 for an 8x10 that is washable. Gosh, I wish I knew the exact cost because I used a coupon from Rugs USA when I bought it. I want to say it was around 170 so it was expensive but not expensive for a rug if you catch my drift if you've bought rugs before rugs rugs and throw pillows and throw blankets are like insanely expensive for what they are like a rug it's just gonna go under our feet but whatever we love the rug it has a nice little sheen to it so it hides dirt really well too but like i said it's washable everything will be linked down below for you guys so we're gonna do some serious before and after shots i've done so many big makeovers that i've shared with you guys and we're gonna walk through them we did a diy small bathroom makeover where we completely renovated everything except for the flooring i painted we got a new vanity we got new lighting fixtures we got new outlet covers we got new switches a new sink like we got everything new in here and it's really up the look it's really nice and also really wild to see all of my pins from Pinterest and like vision boards and all of that stuff come to life. And slowly but surely we are working our way through the house and making that all come true with the flooring, the baseboards, the bathroom, vanity, all of the good stuff, the kitchen, everything that we've done is stuff that I've wanted to do to a home for a really long time. And we haven't owned or lived in a house that we owned for a really long time either. So to be able to do this and see it all come to life has been truly amazing for me. I've been loving every step of the way. I love how my living room looks right now. It is so light and bright in comparison to what it was. It is so comfy. It is the perfect place to curl up and read a book. It is the perfect place to sit down with the entire family and watch a movie and have a big movie night on the big comfy couch. I love everything about it. It isn't necessarily modern farmhouse. It isn't necessarily modern. It isn't necessarily contemporary, but it is exactly me and exactly what I want. One of the other big things that we did was this shiplap wall with this cabinet from Ikea. It added some storage and got everything off of the floor, hid the cords, and brightened up the room a lot as well. And a huge upgrade that we did because we really did not have a pantry. We had one slender tall cabinet in the kitchen is convert the underneath of our stairs, this closet here that was wasted space, we converted that into a walk-in pantry. The only downside of the walk-in pantry being underneath the stairs is hitting your head on the sloped ceiling, but we have multiple shelves and tons of spaces for all the snacks and all the canned goods and all that stuff. But I can't even stress this enough seeing our projects come to life and seeing my pinterest dreams come to life has been so amazing 
this has truly been a labor of love transforming these spaces and it's taken so long to get to the point that we're at now we've replaced appliances we've replaced the sink we've epoxied the countertops i shared two videos on how to epoxy countertops how to prep them and how to actually epoxy the countertops this was a huge project this was our first makeover project and it really really upped the way that our kitchen looked from taking old Formica countertops into epoxy, giving it that marbled look for a fraction of the cost because we could not afford countertops at the time that we moved into our house. We were new homeowners. We got two little kids, just regular Joe people. And also I took you guys through the cabinet makeover. I showed you guys how I painted my oak cabinets. And also I showed you how to fill wood grain and we completely updated the look of the kitchen by painting the cabinets the cabinet painting and all of that was my baby. This was my huge project. And I really feel like the kitchen is probably one of the biggest projects that we did in steps, of course, and it completely transformed the look. The flooring was just like the final touch, the icing on the cake, and it really, really, really made my kitchen dreams come true. I love everything that we've done. I love our floors and I love my kitchen. I love my house and I cannot wait to take you guys along with us on more makeovers to come. We are going to be making over our RV. So look for an RV makeover. We're going to completely redo our stairs and our banisters. We're going to do wood stairs. We're going to do updated, more modern looking banisters as well redoing all the flooring upstairs, redoing our loft, redoing my bedroom. There are so many more makeover videos to come. So if you are somebody who loves makeover videos, then stick around and subscribe. I would love to have you join me for all of the makeover adventures, but I also have tons of cleaning motivation on my channel as well every week. So stick around for that too, if that is something you're into. I just wanna say, Thank you all for being here, tagging along with me for this makeover video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll get my husband to help me answer them so I get you the proper answers. Everything will be linked down below, but if there's something that you don't see, let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know what your favorite part of the video was. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for coming with me on my makeover adventures as I work my way through my home. I hope you have a wonderful day and I appreciate you and your time taken out to watch this video. Have a wonderful day and thank you again.